Good morning, San Francisco. Hello everybody, good morning, happy Monday. We are currently in San Francisco. We've made it down south. To catch you all up to speed, I'm gonna give you a little bit of synopsis of our timeline for the past couple of weeks. I wrote it down on the side here. On March 25th, that was a Thursday, we moved out of our apartment in Seattle. And that evening we drove down to Portland. I actually hired movers to come into my apartment and package everything and move them into a storage. I used a clutter. Jewel and I packaged most of our apartment by ourselves so that we could hopefully cut down the cost of having the movers come in and package everything because they charge you hourly. The only things we had left to package were the furniture and the kitchen items. And when they came, we started packing the kitchen items. And it was just crazy how expensive it was. The total came out to $1,000 for them to come in, package everything, even though we'd packaged most of our apartment already and move it into storage which apparently talking to people is a pretty normal cost. Yeah, we didn't expect that. We, we allocated like $300 each, so $600 for the moving fee, and it came out to $1,000, which is crazy. But it happens, we can't go back. It was kind of necessary to hire them though, because we were on a short timeline. Without taking days off work, there was no way we could move stuff into storage. And I was just in a place at work where I was in the middle of a few projects, didn't want to take too many days off. So then on that evening of the 25th, we drove down to Portland. We stayed there until Saturday morning, the 27th, just working out of a hotel. We tried to do this whole thing without taking any days off work, um, just because we were kind of in the middle of some projects. And in Portland, we had the craziest thing happen. We parked our car in a parking garage that could have sworn it was going to be open the next day, but then it was closed and we had to figure out who to call to try to get our car out of the parking garage. Luckily, there was another party that also had their car stuck in that garage. Not that I would wish it upon anyone, but it was nice to not be alone in that situation. The number listed on Google for that parking lot was just not answering for the longest time until they finally did and they couldn't open the garage either. So we actually had to go across the street to a different office building where security could let us in. But this whole thing took like three hours and kind of panicking that our car was stuck in this garage for the weekend. Luckily we did get our car out so we left and we drove down to Redding, California where we just stayed there for one night as kind of a pit stop. It was funny, I think there was a dog show going on so when we checked into our hotel the lady asked us if we were competing in a dog show because we had Otis with us. It was also kind of stressful being in Redding, California because no one was wearing masks. We basically just stayed in our hotel the whole time. Then the next morning on the 28th we drove down to Oakland, California. This is where our first day was. We couldn't find a stay in San Francisco that was within our budget to start right away. So we got an Airbnb in Oakland, California first. So we just stayed there for a couple of nights and now we're in Bernal Heights, San Francisco. We were trying to save a little bit of money and thank goodness we did because now with the rent that we have for this month, we can afford the clutter moving fee. But the downside is we're kind of living in a basement. So you're gonna have to excuse the poor lighting in the upcoming vlogs. Also, if my voice sounds sleepy, it's because I did pretty recently wake up. So yeah, we're gonna be here for a little while and then for the month of May, it's still open-ended. We're not really sure what we're gonna do. We're leaning towards staying in San Francisco because we do need to be in Michigan in the midsummer, and we would have to figure out how to store Julian's car if we left San Francisco. Plan is not flushed out quite yet. But yeah, I'm excited to be back. I haven't been vlogging in a while. I think it's been at least a month since I vlogged. I do have some other videos coming out. I've been editing those. I completely underestimated how long it would take to edit these videos while working a full-time job, but I have a what I spend in a week in Seattle coming out, a desk makeover video, a all about living in Seattle video, and I did have an apartment tour that was in the plans, but I accidentally deleted or lost all the footage. I don't know where the footage is and it's just so sad. I was so excited to show you all that corner unit apartment I had in Seattle, but I'm thinking maybe I can find enough clips from vlogs to stitch together some kind of apartment tour. But right now it's 8.30 a.m. I'm about to hop onto work. I always start off my Mondays with a giant organization session. So I've got my bullet journal. 
I've got my fun highlighters. I'm gonna pull up my OneNote app, which I use for digital planning, my work tasks, just because there's too many work tasks to keep track of in my bullet journal. And I'm gonna spend about 30 minutes to 45 minutes just planning. The general routine I'm trying to build is to start work at 8 a.m. and between 8 to 10 a.m. handle email, any planning, and also just update any open issues. And then at 10 a.m. I try to take a little bit of a movement break. So I'm gonna do a little bit of yoga flow and I have the Boho Beautiful yoga app, which I've always loved her yoga flows on YouTube. And she has an app that I subscribed to recently. I think it's like $4 a month. And I absolutely love her flows. And this month she has a workout calendar. It's called Begin Again, starting back up from zero, which is exactly what I need because I have not been working out very much. I've been pretty active, like in terms of walking Otis and Jewel and I going to the park for fun, that kind of stuff. But I haven't had a workout routine in a little too long. So today is April 5th. Uh, it's a beginner yoga flow for self-care and love, which sounds so pleasant. <laughs> so I'm probably going to do that now. I'm trying to slow down, not get ahead of myself and start back again from the basics because I definitely get a little too excited to get into some advanced yoga positions where my body may not be ready to jump back to that point just yet. Ooh, baby, my so crazy. Squad. We're walking around our neighboring streets trying to find some lunch. We decided to stop at this place called Melinda, Peru. I think it's Peruvian food. Microsoft has got a new employee. Boy, he's crusty. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone. Talk to you later. It is 6.20 p.m. I just hopped off work and I'm gonna go to a dog park with Odie. Also, this jacket, I've been wearing it every single day. It's from Princess Polly. I wear it every day because it's so comfy and easy to put on. But the problem is, the zipper is absolutely terrible. It takes me so long to zip this coat up because the zipper just gets stuck in the fluffiness of the coat. Ugh. Anyways, it was a little, it was getting tough towards the end of the work day. I always start to lose a little bit of gas when it hits like 4 p.m. I always start off the day so strong and then I just start procrastinating, trying to multitask, losing track of things by the time it hits 4 p.m. We're gonna go on a little adventure. It's never Adventure time, adventure time. 
He also needs a haircut. You wanna go for a walk? Right now, I'm just imagining myself as a sim walking throughout the sim world, walking their dog, going to the dog park, you know. I'm convinced everything is cuter when you think of your life as the sims. I don't know, everything the sims does is so cute in the game. And it's just as enjoyable. And I also wanted to thank the sponsor that I have that will get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash So thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. This work setup is not doing it for me, so we're gonna make something up. I don't have my standing desk here and I really miss it because sitting all day is just definitely not good for my hips and back. I brought my suitcase here. I'm gonna try and make a makeshift standing desk on this counter. This is a new setup for now. We're on the way to go get lunch right now, but Otis pooped in the sidewalk and went out of poop bags. So Julian is running back to the house to go get some poop bags, and I'm just sitting here waiting. We refresh our meal pal subscription, and there are so many meal pal options here. I'm gonna share with you all a mini clothing haul. First is this outfit, which you've seen me wear yesterday and I'm wearing it again today and I'm probably gonna wear it again tomorrow, but it's a sweatsuit from Target. The pants are surprisingly very high-waisted, like my belly button is right here and the waistline of the pants is all the way up here, which I like. And then the top is a classic hoodie. It's also a purple tie-dye. These. They didn't really actually come together, but I bought them because they were both purple tie-dye and I actually kind of like how they aren't exactly the same shade. It looks a little less pajama-like. I was looking for the perfect lounge set online for the longest time and I just couldn't find something I liked. Like I was always worried about the quality. The price tag was just too high at other places like Everlane and then at Airy. Everything is cropped and I don't like tops that are cropped when I'm thinking about a lounge set because I just want to be fully covered and really comfortable. Um, I'm never, I've never been a big dress person. I kind of just don't like how they look on me. It's very rare I find a dress that I like how it looks. And this is one of them. I got it also from Target. It was $27.99, $28. And it's just this super flowy, colorful dress. It's kind of like a baby doll fit. I'm gonna try it on for you all. It's super chunky and like super, super loose fit. I really, really like it. I'm super comfortable in it. It's super loose, airy, and it's just really easy to throw on. Oh no, my battery camera's about to die. Okay, let's see if I can finish this. The last thing I got is from Lisa Says Ga. Uh, I've been eyeing their clothing for so long, but it's definitely on the higher end of my budget. Um, so this is the first piece I've got from them, and I'm really excited. I haven't even opened it yet. Oh my gosh, I love this piece so much. Hi everybody, good morning. Hi everyone, happy Thursday. It is 9.44 a.m. I didn't start filming until a little bit later today because I wanted to have my morning routine to myself. I woke up at 7 a.m. I took Otis on a long walk. I walked all the way to this coffee shop that's a 30 minute walk round trip and realized 
I forgot my wallet. So then we came back, made my own coffee, drinking it out of this fun little mug. Working in this dimly lit apartment is starting to get to me a little bit. It's definitely cozy though, so I like that. I feel like it helps me focus a little bit better because I can just get my warm drink and focus on my computers and my work. But at the same time, I feel a lot of pressure to be getting more sunlight, especially now that I'm in San Francisco. And I always get a huge energy dip in the afternoon. And I don't know if that's because I'm not getting enough sunlight during the day. So that's something I need to figure out. But luckily we only have maybe three to four more weeks in this apartment before we switch to a different Airbnb. So hopefully it'll be better than that one. It's gonna be a little bit smaller, but it has better natural light, which is good. Today's goal is to design a evening routine. I have a really good morning routine and I'm always thriving in the mornings. And lately in the evenings is when I've been having my early life existential crises again. I haven't been having these crises for a while now. I think doing therapy really helped with those, but I stopped therapy maybe like two months ago and this past week I've realized that these thoughts are coming back. I just feel like when I'm having these thoughts, I'm being plagued by the questions, am I in the right place in life? What am I doing with my life? Should I be living a more extraordinary life? Is my life too average? Am I too average? And when I think about it, it's weird because these thoughts, they just come out of nowhere. And I think a lot of it stems from social media. I feel like I'm really good about not comparing myself on social media, but I think there is a part of that that you can't control, that your brain subconsciously does compare you when you see things on social media. I've been seeing a lot of TikTok posts, Instagram posts that you know are in the category or start off with, this is your sign to quit your desk nine to five job. And when I see these things, my brain subconsciously starts to feel a lot more pressure to do more extraordinary things. And it starts to resent my nine to five job as something that's holding me back which I know is not true, even though I think it's true right now, but I know in the grand scheme of things, it's not true because I've gotten out of this mindset before. I definitely used to fear nine to five jobs, which is a weird thing to fear, but I feel like I felt it was that direct pipeline into an average lifestyle where I'd become this cubicle rat and come out at the end of my life and realize I did nothing with my life, but that's just not true at all. That's such a false narrative. And I don't know who, where this, narrative or reputation came from and sometimes i absorb it and believe it and then it makes me resent my job and my lifestyle and i start to feel pressure like i'm on the completely wrong path and believing this or having this narrative fed to me really made it 10 times harder to transition into my first full-time job outside of college it took me like a year to change that mindset and unbrainwash myself from that narrative that's been fed to me Anyways, I don't really have my thoughts ironed out basically what I'm trying to say. I'm feeling these thoughts starting to re-enter my head and then the question comes up, do I just need to change my mindset or do I actually need to change my life to do something more extraordinary? And sometimes I think just changing my life, doing something more extraordinary, like going to move to a foreign country on a whim would be a lot easier than trying to change my mindset. These thoughts always peak in the evenings. So that's why today I am designing an evening routine. So hopefully I can manage um, that. I brought over my blue fuzzy blanket because it's actually kind of chilly in here. And it's so cozy doing work with this blanket. For those of you who are interested in what I do on a daily basis for work, for context, I'm a hardware manufacturing engineer at Microsoft. I work on the design and manufacturability of everything that goes into a data center that makes up Azure and Microsoft's cloud services. So that's like the servers, the racks, the power cables and try to include a lot about my job on here because I originally started this platform to share more about STEM for women in STEM, for anyone entering or working in the engineering world. My channel has evolved since, but it's something that I like to keep a part of my content still. So I'm taking a look at my calendar today and we'll give you a rough layout of what I have going down. So today's Thursday. I usually have a lot of meeting on Thursdays. I try to put all my meetings on Thursdays. I like to batch my meetings on certain days if possible. Sometimes it's not always in my control because it's like a group meeting and we just need to find a time that works well for everyone. But I really try hard to 
keep Mondays and Fridays meeting free. I keep Fridays meeting free because I set time aside to learn and think about my career development on Fridays. And I like to keep Mondays meeting free because that way I don't get stressed on Sunday. Also a heads up, I'm gonna have to be vague about a few things because I don't want to release any company confidential information. But at 8.30 a.m. I had an hour long meeting with another team at Microsoft who manages the hardware at the data center. So meeting with them, communicating any issues and timeline we see with upcoming builds of new products. After that, I worked on some action items I had for this other project I'm on that's involved with building something for the first time at one of our suppliers, at one of our factories. Then there was an employee town hall for an hour. And the next 30 minutes I spent reviewing some open issues that we've been seeing with hardware. So this means communicating with the factory on potential solutions, communicating with the design team, communicating with people at a data center to communicate what the timeline is to resolve this issue, um, set up any tests that are needed, collect materials, those types of things. And which th these are my favorite things to work on, the hardware issues, because it's the law of problem solving. Then I had a, another 30 minute meeting, which is a over a project that is involved in figure out what the lead time is for a bunch of different tasks, how long to expect for different types of builds, which this is actually a lot more complicated than it sounds because every build, every piece of hardware varies so much in its complexity and we're trying to break it down into as much of a formula as we can. Now it's noon, it's lunchtime. Julian's still in a meeting though, so I'm waiting for him to be done so we can do some lunch together. After lunch, I have another meeting with, it's just a one-on-one -on -one with someone to review an engineering change request that I sent in. Then I have about two hours of time to work on individual projects. I'll probably continue working on this one project that is a process improvement project revolving around automating how we track open issues and projects within my own team. And it's one of my favorite projects that I'm working on right now. I love incorporating my coding skills into my hardware job because I did do a CS minor and I do love coding. I just didn't want it to be my whole job, which is why I made it a minor instead of a major. To finish off the day, I have another meeting and this is with one of our factories and also our internal team to just kind of sync on where we are in terms of different products that we are building. My last meeting today is at 6, 6 to 6, 15. A 15 minute meeting is so short. I actually don't know what this meeting is about. It just popped up on my calendar. I don't usually have this meeting, but yeah, today's a meeting heavy day. It's actually not as meeting heavy as Thursdays have been in the past, which is really nice. I really don't like meeting heavy days in our virtual environment. go on a little hike nearby there's this little hilly hill in Bernal Heights in San Francisco and when you get to the top it's a really nice view Friday, it's always a good day when it's Friday. You know, as much as I love my job, I still look forward to a Friday immensely. It's just like a, a switch of pace for the week because the rest of the week is the weekend and Fridays are usually pretty chill. Anyways, today I went on my morning walk and I also got a coffee. I actually forgot my wallet again, but they took Apple Pay, so it was all good. Also, the morning walks are such a mood booster and I've realized it does so much for my mental health. It's getting that natural light first thing in the morning that, you know, wakes me up, sets the energy for the day. And also another huge thing that helps me on my walks is listening to high vibrational music. So there are vibrational activation playlists or just high energy confidence boosting music that gets me like feeling myself. Also helps a lot. There's this thing trending on TikTok I, oh, I really want to credit the user, but I don't remember who created it. I don't know if I've even seen the original video, but there's a concept called the hot girl walk. So you go on a walk and all you do is think about how hot you are and things you are grateful for. It might sound conceited thinking you're really hot, but I think it's honestly 
an activist stand against the patriarchy because the patriarchy is structured around the idea that women need validation from men and that their beauty determines their worth and it's such an unnatural way to determine worth because it's something that can't be earned and then when women get plastic surgery or monetize off of their beauty people get upset about it because it's kind of breaking this societal rule that tell women that you're born with whatever beauty you have and that's the worth you are assigned at birth which is so messed up anyway i'm going on a tangent but basically if you are a woman and you just believe you're hot no matter what other external circumstances is it's kind of like a middle finger to the patriarchy well i didn't expect to talk about that <laughs> this morning <laughs> Picking up an order for Julian, take out order. Mm -hmm. 